All right, now we're live. Um, this is actually take three, so thank you for uh, joining us. But this will be the final take, I promise you that. So the holiday sales rush is right around the corner. Are you ready? So for those of us who are in the e-commerce space, this is our game time, this is our peak season. So in this video, we're gonna talk more about making sure that we maximize our uh, time that we have here in the fourth quarter, especially around that holiday rush, uh, so that we can uh, do the best we can and get the best results possible. So let's talk a little bit here. So my name is Kevin and I am from maximizingecommerce.com and I help people start and grow e-commerce businesses. And like I said, in this video, we're gonna talk about fourth quarter and focus on the holiday rush uh, just to get you uh, up and ready. So we're gonna talk about regardless of whether you're brand new to selling online or if you're a seasoned uh, veteran, hopefully this is something that can be helpful for you um, as you work to maximize uh, your holiday season. And uh, feel free to share any questions or comments or anything you wanna cover um, in, the, uh, in the comments down below. Even if this is uh, the replay, and this is live on Facebook right now as I film this, and then uh, this will be posted on YouTube. So if you're watching the replay on YouTube, still feel free to leave a comment or question down below. Um, if I can't get to it right away, um, I'd be more than happy to cover it in a future video or at least uh, answer your question in the comments. So I am in my garage, which also doubles as my workspace. So i um, been, of course, ordering lots of stuff getting ready for this uh, holiday season, really want to maximize it out. So this is actually my second year selling online. Um, learned a lot last year and want to share some of what I learned. So hopefully if you're new, you won't make the same mistakes I did and really maximize it. So it was nothing, you know, major mistakes, but it was things that I, I learned I could have done a little bit better. So for one, um, what I really want to touch on is this was what my first year looked like. So uh, I, I know this is going in reverse order. So uh, on, on the feed, most likely. So it, just bear with me here. So I, I started in February and then, you know, went to December. I know that most likely this is going to be shown to you in reverse, just the way it works on the Facebook feed. And I believe on the replay it would be the same as well. Um, so looking at this, you know, decent sales, decent sales, decent sales, added a couple products. We've got some more sales and then whoosh, fourth quarter. And what this doesn't show you here is that Amazon actually, and this is just amazon.com, not showing Canada or eBay or uh, my own Shopify store, but this is the one that really kind of, I think, demonstrates um, what can potentially happen, the rocket ship that launches um, around the holidays. Um, and what it doesn't show you there is during this peak here, I actually had, um, according to Amazon, about $10,000 in lost sales. Um, and $10,000 would have been you know, a decent month in the time period leading up to that. So it was pretty crazy. And Amazon it actually have like an algorithm. So if you run out of stock, they like to tell you what they think that you would have lost based on their algorithm um, because it's, it's just crazy busy. So, and it's not just me that has like the, the, the bumps and increases around the holidays. So this is a chart here, which again, you're gonna have to use your imagination that it's probably gonna be shown to you in reverse. Uh, but this is 2007 through um, the beginning of 2007 to the beginning of 2017. So this is last holiday season, 2016. Um, so you can see there's a bump every year. Now, where's the trend line going? The trend line is going up. So that's what's going on in e-commerce. And what definitely goes on in Amazon um, is that, you know, more and more people every year are buying. And that, you know, it's funny when you really kind of look at it. Um, a couple years later, the slow summer season is what used to have been a uh, busy peak period. So um, I don't imagine that changing anytime soon, especially when Recently, we had the uh, announcement that Toys R Us uh, went bankrupt. So after this holiday season, they're probably not going to be with us anymore as a company, which is sad because I grew up with that company. But it just shows you that more and more people are buying stuff online, uh, which creates a great opportunity for those of us um, like you and I who are willing to capitalize on that. So if you are brand new to this space, I'm going to touch on that a little bit here. And then for those of us who are uh, been doing this a while. Um, we're going to touch on things that will, you know, 
hopefully help you, or at least good reminders uh, that you might already know. And if you're new, those new re those reminders will be helpful for you as well. But if you are new and you've never done this before, um, make sure you get into Amazon. So I'm a big proponent of start on Amazon. I'm also a big proponent of don't think of this as an Amazon business. Think of this as an e-commerce business where you've got different channels, um, different ways that you're accessing customers. And Amazon is one of those ways of doing so. So it's by no means the only way to access customers is on amazon.com, but it's one, it's probably the best way and it's the easiest way. Um, so it's October 5th as I which actually is on my watch. Uh, sometimes I do that and it's not on my watch, but um, depending on which watch I'm wearing. So the fact that it's now October 5th and um, last year in like mid to late August, they restricted sending in inventory to new sellers. It wasn't that they didn't want new sellers. It's just because their fulfillment centers get so filled up with uh, inventory. So they do a lot of things like they increase uh, the cost for storage fees, which is fine. I'd rather pay more storage fees than run out of inventory. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, that here in a little bit. But the, the key is just get something in. Like even if you just go after you watch this video or you know, hopefully within 24 hours of watching this video, uh, go to like Walgreens or Target or Walmart or someplace, just buy something on clearance, something that looks like you might even, you know, break even. It doesn't matter. Just send a product into Amazon so you can at least hopefully have a foothold. Uh, don't know what their rules will be if they even have the same rules as they've had in the past, but I would say you're better off getting something in than nothing if you've never sold on Amazon and you're interested in doing it. Just do it. Just get something in there. Just just get the ball rolling. And we're going to talk a little bit here towards the end of a big mistake I made in 2004 uh, that I kind of kicked myself for. But, you know, it, we all make mistakes. But I'm going to share it with you. Um, so if you're thinking about getting started here, hopefully my mistake I made in 2004, um, which I have reminding me down by my feet, um, hopefully that will be a, a good reminder for you. Um, but if for whatever reason you're new and you try to get stuff into Amazon, they come up with some new uh, rule for the holidays and they cut off new sellers until last year was like around December 16th or something like that or 19th. It was towards the end of December. You could send your inventory in and they would accept it. Um, so if that happens, well, there's still eBay, there's still Shopify, there's still Etsy, there's still all kinds of different channels. In fact, there's still people buying stuff after the holidays. It's just we have such a big rush, so you might as well try to take advantage of it now. But if you can't take advantage of it, um, that's fine. That's fine. Just try to find some way to take advantage of it. When I say take advantage of it, I mean capitalize on it. Um, whether it be you know through another channel like uh, eBay or something like that. Um, I don't know that eBay has had restrictions in the past. If you know of any restrictions, whatever, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, but just get something in, especially if you're new. The big thing is just take action. Just take action. Um, so then if you're new or seasoned, you know, keep in mind that there's going to be delays. There's delays in everything. That's one thing I learned. You know, you're... Um, you're going to probably be ordering a lot of products. So make sure you have a lot of products. So I'm stocking up, as you can see behind me, with uh, lots of product just to make sure I have enough on hand. I don't want to run out. Uh, that was, the again, the big mistake I made last year was uh, running out of product. And I don't want to do that again. I'm trying to make this a little better viewing experience here for you. Um, but anyway... Uh, Everyone's trying to order stuff from the suppliers. So the suppliers, you know, they have a certain amount of capacity of, you know, product they can make and they get kind of to their uh, limit, so to speak, around the holidays. So lots of people are trying to buy lots of stuff. So there's a lot of product being pushed through the factories. So there gets to be a little bit of a backlog. It's kind of like, you know, rush hour traffic. So think of it as there's going to be a backlog at the factories. Then, you know, getting it on, you know, shipping containers or on airplanes to send in. Uh, to you um, or directly to um, Amazon, your third party uh, logistics company, whatever the case is, there's always going to be um, some sort of delay, you know, even if it's just a day or two, like just expect in every step of the process, it's going to take a little longer than it probably normally does the rest of the year. Um, and then also, like if you're sending into Amazon, you know, they end up having, you know, lots of people sending stuff in. So they sometimes have longer than expected 
um, times for stuff to get checked in, whereas normally it might take a day or two for your inventory to get checked in when it first gets there. It might take a week or two sometimes when it's around the holidays because there's so much stuff being uh, sent into the warehouses. So just factor those things in into your, uh, to your game plans. Um, then make sure you've got your outside channels ready to go. So I'm a big proponent of, you know, again, don't just think of like if you're selling on Amazon, Amazon's not the only channel out there. Um, there's so many people buying in so many different places that, you know, try to get in some of those other marketplaces, whether it be Etsy or eBay or, you know, your own store. Like, you know, I use Shopify, but, you know, you can use whoever you want, Big Commerce or WooCommerce or, you know, whatever works for you. Um, you know, just have all your, your, your ducks in a row. Um, that it, you know, and if you have your own store, you know, make sure you've got your marketing uh, kind of semi planned out. You don't necessarily have to have everything. I mean, I'm still working on all this myself, but uh, just sometimes getting this out there and saying it to the world, this is what I'm doing, helps me remember what are the things I need to do. Um, but again, if you have ideas or anything that you know you found works in the past, you know, feel free to leave a comment or a question down below. Um, and then also, you know, make sure that you've got your fulfillment processes ready to go. So, you know, if you're doing FBA fulfillment by Amazon, it's easy. It just, you know, make sure you have inventory in their warehouses and then they ship it out to customers when customers buy. That's simple. But in a lot of cases, um, you know, let's say you have eBay or your own store, um, you know, Etsy, whatever, and let's say you're shipping it out of your house or a third-party logistics company, you know, make check in with a third-party logistics company if it's a 3PL. Um, you know, check in with them just to make sure that they're ready to go. Or if there's any, you know, thing they need from you. Um, if it's out of your house, you know, do you need to hire someone to help you? Um, that's something I'm looking at. You know, do you, um, do you have everything lined up as far as, you know, your accounts? So, you know, if you use like ShipStation or something like that, uh, make sure you have everything ready to go so that you're, um, set up, you've got your processes, you know, like what size boxes you need for certain products. I mean, you don't want to be running around staples, spending hours trying to find the right size box to send out a, a package, or you end up sending out a huge box because you only have, you can't find the right box size. So find box sizes now, um, where you can buy them, you know, online, you can get them in you know, a lot less expensive than you can if you had to go run to the store because everyone else in the world is trying to go buy, not just for their e-commerce stores, but, you know, if you go to Walmart or Staples or wherever, I mean, everyone else is trying to buy boxes. So just keep that in mind. These are mistakes I made last year. Um, so it could save you time and stress and, you know, you're not pulling your hair out. In fact, I think some, there was probably a few more hairs in this area here last year when, uh, before the, the holiday season, but it was worth it. It was worth it. And I'm excited for it this year. So, you know, plan for um, increases in costs. So, like, if you're doing, you know, Facebook ads or if you're doing um, Amazon pay-per-click ads or, you know, wherever you're doing ads, expect that there's going to be a lot more demand of people buying, but there's also a lot more demand of people who are selling who are trying to get to those customers. So you oftentimes will see... Um, prices go up. So that's not uncommon. So expect that. Um, then on the back end, be ready for a customer service. So one, you might make mistakes or, you know, if you have a team, your team might make mistakes as far as what they send out. And then just expect in the whole, the whole uh, supply chain, things are going to go wrong. Uh, your suppliers are going to be, like I said, kind of overwhelmed because they have a lot going on. If you have you know, product that you're sending through the post office or, you know, Amazon sends it through the post office or UPS or FedEx, what's going to end up happening is something's going to get lost. I mean, it just, it happens. There's, you know, so much stuff being moved around, you know, whether people buying on e-commerce and then, you know, still 90% of commerce happens in stores and, you know, people send from maybe their house to their relatives, uh, whatever the case is, um, you know, or their loved ones, their friends, whatever, people are sending packages all over the place. So, you know, the, whether it be, you know, the postal service, FedEx, UPS, um, Amazon, you know, all third-party logistics companies, everybody's hiring a lot more seasonal labor. And with seasonal labor, you know, seasonal labor, you know, it's people that, you know, want to do a good job. I mean, I've had seasonal jobs in my life. Um, and I've been in uh, positions where I've hired people in seasonal jobs. And, and it's not necessarily that people don't want to do the job um, or they're not capable. It's just they don't necessarily have the experience. And then also what's happening is, you know, people that are in seasonal jobs, there's just a lot of, um, there's just a lot of stuff going on. It's busy. 
So those people that are working those seasonal positions, you know, and the full timers that are there too, there's just so much stuff going through that, you know, if they're, if you think of it again, like kind of like a traffic jam, if there's usually so many cars going down the road, then all of a sudden there's way more cars. Um, it just, the whole process starts to backlog. So the mistakes end up happening. Um, like I remember one story I had this, uh, woman, um, wrote me, she was really upset about this one particular product she had. And she was upset because she got a plastic toy and the plastic toy that she got had absolutely nothing to do with what she bought. But what ended, what it was, was, um, I was afraid because I, uh, I have a now two year old who last year was one. He loves to help. And I love the fact he loves to help. It's wonderful. So he likes to play with these like little, um, plastic food toys. Um, and the woman said she got plastic food. And I thought maybe he took one of the boxes that I used to package this particular product in and put plastic and plastic food in. And I was like, Oh no, that's terrible. <laughs> she, the plastic food got in there. Oh my God, do we do this? So I asked her to send me a picture, um, of the product as well as, you know, her, um, tracking number and stuff so that I could do a little research on it. Well, it turns out it was Amazon just sent her the wrong product and it wasn't even close to the right product. I mean, people make mistakes and Amazon doesn't make mistakes like that very often. So, I mean, I can't really fault them. I mean, uh, there's, unfortunately they have, you know, really good processes, but they have, you know, humans and humans make human mistakes. So expect more human mistakes is really what I'm getting to around the holidays. So, you know, you might have to comp a couple of, uh, things, you know, sometimes I would just send people stuff out of my house. It just, especially if Amazon was a little bit backed up. Um, it wasn't worth it. Cause at the end of the day, I'm a firm believer of just keep the customer happy. So, um, that's the big thing with customer service. Then also what I would say is, um, with more sales equals more returns. So, even if you have the, the, your return percentage is constant. So I think mine, most of last year was about 2%. And I think around the holidays, it was right around 2%. I mean, it wasn't far off. I mean, not more than like a half a percent difference around the holidays. If there was even a difference at all, I should probably look that up, um, to quote that more accurately. But if you have five times as much sales, you're going to have theoretically, if you have the same return rate, five times as many returns. So it can be a little bit overwhelming. So also with your processes, I would say is, um, you're going to get a lot more emails. So if Amazon sending out an email, every time they fulfill a product, if eBay sends you an email, every time somebody bought, if you use like geek seller or something like I use for jet and they send you an email every time there's an order. So you may want to actually look at this. Is, I'm kind of talking out loud of the things I need to work on here. You may want to look at what emails are going to what accounts and how do you get alerted to that to make sure that you don't forget or miss an email that's important. Um, because you know, you'll get, the emails for the returns. You'll get emails for, you know, your, your, your order was checked in at Amazon or whatever the case is. So just make sure that you've got processes in order. Um, you know, but the big thing is just take action. And here, here's the story I was going to share with you. So down here I've got, this is, and I've shown this in a video once before, but if you haven't heard me tell the story, this is a Nike forward. Now it's a, it's a golf club and most people don't really ever use four woods. It's kind of an unusual club to have. I have two of them. Now you're saying, why are you showing us this Nike four wood? I bought this on eBay in 2004. It was either 2003 or 2004. Let's just say it was 2004. And my intent was to resell it because I didn't really understand how the research went of saying, you know, what things really sell for on eBay at the time. And I bought it with the intent of selling it. Because I saw on Nike's website that I think if I bought this at, let's say, $40, it was selling for like $300 as the MSRP. Well, I don't know that anyone was actually selling or actually buying it for $300 because the key is what are people actually buying something for? Not just what, you know, some somebody says theoretically it's worth. Um, it's what are people actually buying? That That's the vote people are taking in the marketplace, so, so to speak. So I had this, you know, golf club and I just never got around to selling it. So I didn't really get into online selling at all until 2015 and private labeling until early 2016. And I was thinking about this earlier, like what would, what would this all have looked like for me if I had, um, 
you know, started and just taken small incremental approaches. Didn't have to be big, you know, changes. But, you know, if you just think about, you know, the this growth trajectory, you know, could I have had a growth trajectory like that the last, the 11 years I missed from 04 to 15? Um, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, I could have, you know, done a whole lot more. Um, so don't have that regret. So if you're thinking about getting started, just do it. In fact, if you go to the YouTube channel for Maximizing E-Commerce, um, I recently uploaded a video on how to um, make your first sale on Amazon. It'll go through you know, how to go out and source a product locally at a store so you could use that, just like I was saying earlier, just to send something in, just so you could have something in the warehouses. Um, but more than anything, this is an exciting time. If you're in this, like I was saying at the beginning, this is game time. So more than anything, just have fun. Enjoy it. Um, it can be addicting, to be quite honest, like looking at the uh, the seller app, like on Amazon, for example. And I, I think I had, because you have to go like this to, to refresh it. And I think there was problems with my thumb after the holiday season was over, because you know, I'm constantly going like this all day long. I uh, see, it was another one, there's another one. <gasps> oh, we got another sale. Um, so it's pretty exciting. So I'm going to finish up here with a quote. So Ben Franklin said, well done is better than well said. And I think that's really important. And he did a lot of great things in his life. Um, so more than anything, be a doer. Go out there, try things. Don't be afraid that something's going to go wrong. Um, you know, things go wrong all the time. And as long as you're doing things in the right spirit of trying to help the customer and uh, you know, do the right thing, I think the, the rewards will come back to you. I think there really is a boomerang effect in this universe that we live in. Um, so more than anything, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And if you've not, um, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel so we can uh, let you know when we have more videos like this that come up. We also do some uh, educational, more screencast videos uh, just to help you as you're working on maximizing your e-commerce journey. So again, thank you very much.